when we meet to part no more. Please remain standing as we have the opening prayer. Great God and loving Father, we thank you for this service that we will have today as we celebrate what you have done in a life well lived. Attend to us today and fill the voids that now exist in our hearts, we pray in Jesus' name. Please be seated. I use this opportunity to welcome you as together we share in this very significant memorial service for Dr. Kessner, Professor Kessner Robertson, for a life that he's well lived. I invite you to share with me closely on this program by popular request we are going to make the program as short as possible. Is that okay with you? It means, therefore, that when you get here to do your item, you are just going to do it to the point. The request was made that the tributes be done in two minutes, but I know that some of you can do it in a minute and a half. <laughs> I will also ask that those who are on the program to participate to be as close as possible towards the front so that as we go through the program, we will go, go through not rushing but with alacrity, all right? So please work with us accordingly. There is a large Bible that is provided and those who will be participating, we invite you to feel free to come and to use this lectern, all right? So we will now have the first reading, which will be coming to us from Revelation 21, looking from verse 1 to verse 7, and this will be done by Mr. Martin Robertson, son followed by a video presentation from Northern Caribbean University. Thank you. Good morning. Um, I'll be reading from the New King James Version. Revelation 21, verses 1 through 7. Now I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. Also, there was no more sea. Then I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her, for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. God himself will be with them and be their God and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying. There shall be no more pain, for the former things have passed away. Then he who sat on the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said to me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. And he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give of the fountain of the water of, tr of life freely for he who thirsts. He who overcomes shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. and internationally known 
as an outstanding pianist and organist, Dr. Kessner Roberts hired from Atlantic Union College, South Lancaster, Massachusetts in the USA, where he had previously served for 32 years as professor of music, accepted a call from Northern Caribbean University in June 2012 to join its faculty as chair of the Department of Music and Fine Arts. NCU welcomed him with open arms and laid upon him as chair responsibility for the department's administrative, curricular, co-curricular and budgetary matters. Professor Robertson immediately began to review the full range of the offerings of the department with a view of securing accreditation as soon as possible. As a stickler for high standards, it came as no surprise that with the support of faculty, staff and students, within short order, he had revamped the degree offerings of the department and established higher standards of teaching and music performance. It has been our privilege to have this accomplished musician grace our campus here at Northern Caribbean University. His accomplishments uh, will, will certainly add to the musical heritage here at Northern Caribbean University. Dr. Robertson really was the heart of the music department here. He was an innovative leader. He didn't look for problems, he was always looking for solutions and ways that we could make music better here at NCU. He exemplified the Christian work ethic. He would work until the task was completed. He was good at building a team, at developing people. He regarded us as colleagues. So whenever I said, oh, you're my boss, chair of the department, he would say, no, 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 we're colleagues. Dr. Robertson quickly earned the respect and admiration. Pastor Everett Brown. Dr. Lincoln Edwards, President of the Northern Caribbean University, and other members of the university administration, Dr. Merrick Walker, Executive Secretary of the Jamaica Union Conference, Pastor He and Bob, other workers members of the bereaved family, my brothers and sisters, good morning. The news of the passing of Dr. Robertson came as a surprise to most of us. We were praying, we were hoping, we were anticipating that he would return to us here at NCU to join the NCU family. But God knows best. And God called his son, Kestner Robertson. God called him home to rest until the morning, the great resurrection morning. And today I'm honored to pay tribute, to pay tribute to a committed, dedicated servant of God, a man who faithfully used the gifts and talents that God gave to him to lead others to Jesus Christ to fulfill the mission of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. I remember, I recall the brief conversations that I had with Professor Robertson in this very chapel as he shared his vision and his passion to see music occupy its rightful place in our worship services. Dr. Robertson was more than the consummate professional Christian musicologist. He saw himself, and I concur, as one who was called and ordained by God as a minister of music. His service and his ministry to NCU and the church in Jamaica was second to none. We will always remember 
his ministry on this campus. So on behalf of my family, on behalf of the Jamaica Union Conference of Seventh-day Adventists, on behalf of the Board of Governors of NCU, I wish to express our condolences and heartfelt sympathies to you, Josephine, Martin, the other members of the bereaved family, as we join you in mourning the loss of a Christian gentleman, a devout and committed servant of God. May the peace of God and the promises of Jesus Christ, our Savior, comfort you and strengthen you as we look forward to renewing our relationship with our brother and friend in the morning on the great resurrection morning. Pastor Everett Brown, President of Jamaica Union and Chairman of the Northern Caribbean University Board of Governors. Uh, Pastor Mary, Dr. Merrick Walker, Secretary of Jamaica Union and member of the University Board of Governors. Members of the bereaved family, Professor Bain and other members of the academic, and Mrs. Bain and other members of the academic community members of the music fraternity. Ladies and gentlemen, a pleasant good morning. The, N the Northern Caribbean University family wishes to express our deepest sympathies to Professor Robertson's widow, Josephine, son, Martin, daughter-in-law, Clarissa, and other members of the bereaved family. You were kind enough to share him with us as he lived and worked among us at a distance from you, and you allowed him to do that. We indeed mourn his loss with you, and, and his departure has created a void in our hearts that is impossible to fill. The seven years with us created a special bond that will last into eternity. Over the years, the Northern Caribbean University family benefited tremendously from the sterling contribution that Professor Robertson made to, uh, to academia as a member of various committees and as chair of the music department. He was a music educator and musician par excellence. His professionalism and expertise were evidenced in the improvement in performance and output of the department as well as the high level of competence achieved by his students. Two primary examples are indelibly etched in my mind. The first being the occasion of my inauguration, where I had the distinct pleasure of experiencing the performance of the choir under his tutelage. The entire musical presentation was rendered with uncommon elan on stage and could only be described as heavenly and served as an indication to me personally of Professor Robertson's value to the institution. The second performance of note for which accolades were heaped on the department and the university by an external audience was during the occasion of the visit of the accreditation team to this university in which the music department once more outdid itself in its presentation at the welcome reception that was organized for the accreditation team. So impressed were the guests that throughout the five-day visit, they continued to commend and congratulate the department for its exceptional performance. Professor Robertson's contribution to the elevation of the music department as well as its visibility in and relevance to the community was also evident in the reestablishment of the community music program, which provided members in and around the environs of Northern Caribbean University with a greater appreciation of and exposure to the contribution of the institution to the development of music, as well as affording them the opportunity to unearth their talents and identify their musical abilities 
by offering courses to them. Professor Robertson was a man of very few words, but his insightful interventions on issues pertaining to the advancement of his department and by extension the university contributed to the implementation of activities that serve to improve our academic performance and output in general. He was dedicated to his task of equipping students with the requisite skills to be highly functional in the society and to the scholarship of students who were likewise passionate about learning. Some regarded him as a hard taskmaster and his unwavering commitment to excellence did not allow him to accept anything less than the best. He eschewed conflicts but spoke his truth clearly and confidently, even when he was the only dissenting voice on an issue. NCU will ensure that Professor Robertson's legacy of professionalism, dedication, excellence, and his exceptional music abilities endure in his students and colleagues as we establish a scholarship in his honor. Thank you. Our lives have been enriched for having been associated with him, and the world more so, his sphere of influence has been positively impacted by his contribution to its development. Like a fellow musician, Professor Robertson could tell when the end was near, and he was prepared to face life's final curtain. He planned it all, even his own funeral. He has had a few regrets, one of which he revealed in a discourse with me. He told me that if only he had a certain type of organ, he could do so much more. He was not satisfied with the status quo. He was always striving to do more, and hence his status as a colossus in the field of music, and one who will not be easily forgotten. In the end, he stayed the course and did it his way. After his diagnosis, Professor Robertson remained courageous. He knew the statistics associated with the poor prognosis of pancreatic cancer, but he was undaunted by the facts. He looked death in the face and persevered in his belief. And when I spoke with him after his diagnosis, there was no hint of fear in his voice, and neither was there any hint of fear in Josephine's voice as well. How is it then, I might ask, that Professor Robertson could stare death in the face, look at the darkness that threatened to engulf him, face that moment of exhaustion that all of us must face one day should Jesus delay his coming. How could he do that and still believe? How is it possible? Because he believed in a Jesus who stood by a grave and said, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. And after Jesus spoke those words, he proved it. It is our prayer that his belief, that the belief that Dr. Robertson has in Jesus, that defined his life, may be a source of comfort and strength to all of us during this moment of grief and loss. Today we do our best to celebrate the life of one who brought joy to the world through his musical talents. Thank you. A tribute to the late Professor Kessner Robertson from Northern Caribbean University Church. Northern Caribbean University Church had as its music director 
one of the finest musical talents in the person of the late Dr. Kessner Robertson, serving on the pastors Harvey, Cleghorn, and Hay, he held his own in leading the charge for music development within the liturgy of our church. Dr. Robertson was the, uh, the musical authority and wanted to return to God the best of all his abilities in the most professional manner. This led to him settling for nothing below where his training had brought him. He would insist that the organ leads the congregational singing. Almost every conversation we had, I, I know that somewhere in that conversation, something would come up about music and the church. The man was, was possessed by a musical spirit and took every opportunity to perfect and promote the talent and gift that God had given to him. Possessing a simplistic, slender bearing, the soft-spoken Dr. Robertson literally made the organ speak. His playing during the period of, of meditation, which fell between the announcements and the call to worship, led congregants of this church into moments of solemn reflection and ushered a realization of the presence of the living God. When he wasn't playing an instrument during worship, he would be seen in the congregation worshiping and subsequently fellowshipping on the breezeway at the conclusion of the service. He was a man of strong conviction who was not easily persuaded to pursue a course that was incongruent with his belief. He possessed a, a charming and mischievous smile. I remember him approaching me one Sabbath at the northeastern entrance to this, this auditorium with a wider than normal smile. And I inquired, now I, I have a, a name that I call, most of my members have a name that I call them when it's not a professional engagement, I call him Kess. So I said, Kess, what are you up to today? He kept on smiling and he said, you know, you're, you're getting closer to me. As the banter ensued, clarity uh, transformed the opaqueness into translucence as I learned that his excitement was because of a decision Martin had made to get closer to a young lady who shares roots in my native land. <laughs> he was beaming about it. Uh, if he had a different personality, he would have announced it to the church. The university church has students at heart, and so did Dr. Robertson. He generally sat in the, in the left rear of the, of the congregation, where mingling with students was inevitable. He, he made time to, to dine with students in Mandeville and even in Kingston. One day, the congregants of, of NCU Church and all others who believe in Jesus Christ will join the heavenly band. Of the two final destinations available to the human family, we believe that Dr. Robertson will be in the kingdom. Let me tell you three reasons that cause that conviction. One, he accepted the righteousness of Jesus Christ on his behalf. Secondly, only in the kingdom of God will organs and pianos be present. <laughs> and thirdly, only in the kingdom of God will there be a mass choir. And so I'm persuaded that since neither death nor life can separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our member, our music minister, our brother, Kessner Robertson, will be there in the kingdom of the Most High. God bless you.
as we continue with the program, we will now be blessed with a musical tribute from Ms. Sashika Brown, who is a music major at the NCU Music Department, followed by greeting from Mr. Matthew Silpot, who is Music Education Officer, the Ministry of Education, Youth, and Information, Jamaica.
members of the platform, distinguished guests, members of Doc's family, mom, good morning. Good morning. Um, my role as music, well, first I bring you greetings from Minister of Education, Youth and Information, also offer condolences. And I just want to say that my role here as music education officer, most of the work put in is from an influential point of Doc. Um, there have been so many interactions with Doc, and I will share two. My first months at Thayer, at the, the Music Conservatory, I never could understand why a professor would come to class with a, no material. He would just walk in the class, sit at the desk, and he would just teach. And I, I understood later that some of the guys were always trying to get Doc to prove he is wrong about something. And I remember one particular day, one of the, the guys asked him a question pertaining to music theory. And I saw Doc hesitate, and it was a grand excitement because they thought they had Doc in this corner. And Doc responded, well, if you want to look at it that way, please turn to page 65 in the Tone of Harmony book and read paragraph three. <laughs> so, so at that point, I was amazed at the knowledge that he had and the respect that generated from that incident, that he's not somebody that you, you think he can take down lightly. Although he looks simple, he's not. And when he gets you cornered, there's no way out. Um, there's another incident uh, that I, I, I was turning page for him at, a, at some event. And I, I know of his talent in playing, but I was amazed by what was happening with the playing. Because while he was playing, and I was turning pages, he was humming something totally different from music. So he makes these, these hums and these noises that are around the music and still the music. So persons who are quite a ways from him don't understand what is really up close happening. So it, I was still taken aback by that, so I almost lost concentration of taking pages and really listening to what was happening. But Aki's been a great person. Um, as I said before, he has, he has shaped the way of what I am today. And we had conversation. I know that he has been an ambassador for music education, especially in Jamaica. Started a conversation how we can make it better. And I, I, I put it in the, in the front that I will see that through um, in terms of our development and our growth as a people, as we are naturally talented, but put a more educational spin on it. I know Doc is no longer with us in body, but his legacy lives on with us as students and those who have come in contact with this path. God bless you. As we reminisce on the memory, memory moments that we have had with Dr. Robertson, we can only say, guide my feet, Lord. I don't want to run this race in vain. Thank you so much, Sashika. As we prepare for the second set of tributes, uh, we will go first into the video presentation. The technology will allow us to get the same at this time. And after the video presentation, we will have tributes following in this order as outlined. The first will be from Dr. Donna Marie Gray Henry, followed by Dr. O'Neill Mundell, and then Dr. Nanibali Paul. For those on the, the rostrum here, if you so desire, you could join us there so that we can all benefit from the video presentation. A 
As son, of the Jamaican soil, as son of the Jamaican soil and internationally known as an outstanding pianist and organist, Dr. Kessner Robertson, having retired from Atlantic Union College, South Lancaster, Massachusetts in the USA, where he had previously served for 32 years as professor of music, accepted a call from Northern Caribbean University in June 2012 to join its faculty as chair of the Department of Music and Fine Arts. NCU welcomed him with open arms and laid upon him as chair, responsibility for the department's administrative, curricular, co-curricular, and budgetary matters. Professor Robertson immediately began to review the full range of the offerings of the department with a view of securing accreditation as soon as possible. As a stickler for high standards, it came as no surprise that with the support of faculty, staff, and students, within short order, he had revamped the degree offerings of the department and established higher standards of teaching and music performance. It has been our privilege to have this accomplished musician grace our campus here at Northern Caribbean University. His accomplishments uh, will, will certainly add to the musical heritage here at Northern Caribbean University. Dr. Robertson really was the heart of the music department here. He was an innovative leader. He didn't look for problems, he was always looking for solutions and ways that we could make music better here at NCU. He exemplified the Christian work ethic. He would work until the task was completed. He was good at building a team, at developing people. He regarded us as colleagues. So whenever I said, oh, you're my boss, chair of the department, he would say, no, 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 we're colleagues. Dr. Robertson quickly earned the respect and admiration of his NCU students as he became their mentor and friend, unreservedly pouring himself into their training and development, often at great personal sacrifice. He always seemed to have this kind of belief in uh, my abilities and so on. And so um, from there, I began to learn a lot more about music and uh, from him, of course. And, uh, you know, my work improved and such forth. As I grew to know him in the, the time that we spent after that, I found him to be a really warm person. And in addition to being my mentor and somebody who I think is very important to my development as a musician. I think in many ways he and I connected in a personal way that I now realize is a way that he connected with many of his students. I realized that he takes music very seriously. He would sit with you he can sit with you for the whole day and talk to you about music. As long as you go to him and you suggest certain things to him, he would, he would sit with you for the whole day and he would speak to you and he would give you pointers and he would tell you that, okay, you know, you can do this to improve and just the things that he says and how he continues to encourage people, it, it will make you feel good and it made me feel good and it, it made me want to improve as a person and as a musician. Under his leadership, the music department continued the long-held and treasured tradition of the university, providing rich choral and instrumental music for church services and other special events, such as the annual Feast of Lights and graduation exercises. This whole auditorium was resound with sounds that some of us had not heard before because this is uh, this was a man who was so trained in the organ and was so outstanding that it brought us a lot of pleasure and jo joy and so I could say that Kessner Robinson was born to bring musical pleasure in a very demanding genre which is called classical music Dr. Robertson gave the appearance of being a very stern taskmaster and in fact he held himself to a very high standard and he will speak, he would talk of his, um, 
his experiences of excellence of getting straight A grades. But he didn't insist that everybody around him kept that same high standard. He led by example and he encouraged people to do the very best that they can. He was an outstanding mentor. He introduced the community music school and launched our musical concerts as well as staged numerous events on and off campus designed to provide opportunities for his students to showcase their talent and gain valuable experience. These outstanding performances by the music students not only whetted the appetites of the adoring music lovers who attended the events, but also brought the performers and the university national and international acclaim. I really am blessed to have met him and through the years here he has brought in some of his students who are now successful musicians all over the world to do programs that we here could learn from and I admire that also. I admire that he was forward thinking and plan, he planned ahead so even though we did not have all the teachers here on the island, there were avenues that he created that these teachers were able to teach on Skype. And so our program keeps growing and keeps advancing. Northern Caribbean University will not soon forget the invaluable contribution to the growth and development of its music education program that was made by the world-class musician and academician, Professor Kessner Robertson. There's a legacy that he has left. And I think it is for NCU to be committed to have that legacy continue into the future. The university is grateful to his family for having agreed to establish a scholarship in his memory to benefit music students here at Northern Caribbean University. Dr. Robertson passed on Thursday, October 18, 2018, after a brief illness. He is survived by wife Josephine, son Martin, daughter-in-law Clarissa, and other family members. Let us resolve to meet him in the hereafter, and I know that will be the time when we will see him again, and then we will make music in a different situation, different environment. I will miss him, and I'm missing him, because uh, he, he was quiet, yet demanding. Uh, he, he, he had so much vision for this place and the, the things he has put in place that will continue. I know we will be able to keep growing once we keep building on the foundation that he has laid. And I thank the family for allowing him to have been here with us. And I'll continue to pray for your recovery as you deal with your loss. On behalf of the administration, workers and students of Northern Caribbean University, I extend condolences to Dr. Robertson's widow Josephine, uh, son Martin and daughter Clarissa. May the peace of God remain and abide with them both now and forever. The university family expresses its sincere condolences to the family and to the workers and students of the music and fine arts department. continuation of our tributes as they appear in the program by Dr. Donna Marie Gray Henry, Dr. Mundell, and Dr. Paul. President Dr. Lincoln Edwards, members of the faculty of Northern Caribbean University, Mrs. Josephine Robertson and the Robertson family, distinguished guests, family, friends, 
Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. In 2014, the Northern Caribbean University opened their community school of medicine under the leadership of Professor Kesner Robertson. <laughs> In 2014, the Northern Caribbean University opened their community music school under the leadership of Dr. Professor, Professor Kesner Robertson. This remarkable vehicle meant that anyone, anyone, irrespective of your age, irrespective of your gender, irrespective of your musical ability, irrespective of your daytime occupation, anyone could access world-class music education at the Northern Caribbean University. I can attest to that fact because I was one of the first students so enrolled. I will not forget my nervousness, and I don't get nervous often. <laughs> I will not forget my nervousness as I first auditioned for Dr. Kessner Robertson. He looked such a stern gentleman. Over the next four years, however, I had the opportunity to learn from this gentle giant. Dr. Kessner Robertson gave his time and his tutelage with equal generosity to anyone who was willing to learn, be they a prodigious talent or a hopeful aspirant. We miss our Dr. Robertson. The music department feels different. The halls echo with the silence of his absent voice and melody. As a choir, we hear his instructions as a whisper in our ear with every song that we sing. We each of us stand on the shoulders of our ancestors. As students of Dr. Robertson, we stand on broad and lofty shoulders. The teacher has taught and we have learned. We have learned of music to be sure, but we have learned of so much more. We have learned of the synergy of work and worship the duty to generously share the blessings bestowed on us with others, and the beautiful example of humility. We are immensely grateful to God for having shared his creation with us. To his family, we want you to know that every moment that he spent away from you and with us was treasured and appreciated. We mourn but not as those who have no hope. It is this hope of which Dr. Robertson played and sang, and this hope that sustains us. Amen. A distinguished platform to the family Josephine and good morning to everyone. I, it's, a, it's a privilege to share just a few words, a few points about who we have come to know as, to know as Doc. Uh, it seems like as though there are so many other, there were so many other persons who were called doctor and professor, but there was this one person who we considered Doc. Uh, I first met Doc when I was awarded a scholarship to Atlantic Union College, where he was a professor. And I remember I was involved with the University of the West Indies, and I mentioned to uh, Noel Dexter, who was the choir director at the time, that I would be studying alongside Dr. Robertson, and he got so excited, he said, oh, you know that Doc was my teacher. The great Noel Dexter sends his, his regards and his, his condolences. He couldn't be here today, but he asked me to convey that. Uh, Doc was his teacher, and he told me of the days when Doc would expound on theory and show them about improvisation and all of that technical stuff. So I was excited to to meet 
Dr. Robertson and to study with him where I engage with theory, classes and other aspects of music. I quickly learned though that he had very strong ideas about the world, about politics, about everything and he, he loved to have lunch. Lunch was important for him. So as a student, the first day he took me to lunch and then he started to tell me about the days in Jamaica when he was a little boy and he gave recitals to then Premier Norman Manley. As a, as a child, he gave a private, rec private recitals to Norman Manley. And then he went on to tell me about the, the Edna Manley School of Music where he worked in the 70s. And he told me about the demise of music in Jamaica. And, and then he would meet me a month after and tell me the same story again. <laughs> and then a few years, so many years after, he told me about it again, that, that you know, it, it was, he was so passionate about, about what was happening in music that he didn't even remember that he gave. And I would listen to it and, and, and get further details as to what could be done. So he had very strong opinions about that and politics. We sat in the room uh, in the class when the 9-11 incident happened and the class ended up in that giving us a lecture about the American and the American politics and American imperialism and all of that. Uh, and and, and it, it was just the person that you would learn so much from. Uh, he, he, he was pragmatic. One thing I noticed about him, and I asked him, I said, Doc, uh, for someone who is so steeped in, in classical music, you'd play these recitals in, in, in Jamaica and you wouldn't have on your jacket. And he would respond, yes, yeah, Jamaica is so hot. So you don't need to wear a jacket, although you are, and I, it just came, it became so real to me that, that, that yes, we all learned about being in your tails and, your, and, and the suit to play this type of a music. But what he did was take it off and he just would, would just play the music and allow the music to, to speak. So he was really the, the consummate mentor. And I also wanted to, to just um, highlight uh, my colleague, Mr. Hugh Dows, director of Nexus, who was one of the persons who would take the trip, also Mr. Silpot, uh, who spoke earlier, would take the trip here to, to come and be a part of the choir. And he would call me up and we would pull as many musicians just to come and share the experience at NCU. Uh, and I remember one of the, the gentlemen saying uh, that this man, he just said it last year, um, last year, Feast of Lights. He is Jamaica's best kept secret in, in music. Uh, and that to me is the, almost the ultimate tribute. So I, I, I want to just express my gratitude to Doc for the moments we got to share and the inspiration he was to me and to many others who he opened the doors for to come to the United States to gain opportunities in music and to be exposed to music at the highest level. To the family again, thank you for allowing him to share with us. God bless you. morning. I stand, I stand here on behalf of my family and the international faculty group at Northern Caribbean University. Um, for us, Dr. Robertson was a friend, a mentor, and a father figure in Jamaica. Um, as you know, I'm not related to music or uh, I can't sing, I can't play music, but he was my best friend. 
Uh, why? Because he is a very relational person. He loved relationships. And as we know the song, Mary had little lambs. We were his lambs. He was our Mary. And uh, the lambs were the Sinclairs, the Pauls, um, the Pilis, the Narayanas, um, the uh, Babs, um, and also Doc, uh, Bambales and the other international family here in Jamaica. So wherever he went, the lambs were sure to go. So we went. <laughs> so we, and also he had lambs in the department, Sheshika, Mr. Cornwell, and um, the other students. They were also were going wherever he went. So we went to music days, uh, music days in different churches. We went to all his concerts. He was there with us in our social gatherings, in our potlucks. He, w he loved potlucks and social gatherings. And he would ask us, when is the next get together? And he would ask us, um, when I used to call him, sir, we are having get together this time, he would first ask me, what shall I bring? So as an Indian lady, and I didn't want him to cook, so I said, sir, is it, it's OK, you can come. He said, no, I need to bring something. Tell me what I can bring. So he was a very giving person. So he would end up with the biggest box of ice cream or the biggest cake that he could bring. You know, my heart pains because the last spot like we had, he brought the very big cake. And I told him, sir, why did you bring such a big cake? Uh, and after we finished, I told him to take a little and go. And he said, no, I don't eat that. He never ate the cake, but he brought, <laughs> he brought it to my home to, for us all to uh, cherish it. And um, so he was a very relational person, and he, he liked potlucks. And he also told me back at home, he used to go for potlucks every Sabbath. And he, either they used to go to others' home, or they would come to his home. And I also remember him as a very dedicated teacher and who loved his students. Um, one day when we had these potlucks, he comes on time and the others came to us late. And he was hungry, he didn't eat his lunch. And I was searching for him, after two hours I found him. What happened was Mr. Cornwell fell, in, fell down uh, while playing football and got a his hand uh, broken or something, so he went in search of him and took him to the hospital, brought him back to my home after two hours, even with the hungry stomach. That's Dr. Robertson. And I remember him as a very passionate family man. Uh, one day, I, during the potluck, church potluck, I was sitting in the gymnatorium. He always came in search of us, and he sat with us, and he was talking so much about his wife's hard work and her expertise. And so he introduced me to Dr. Josephine, who later on became an external examiner for us in the College of Education and Leadership. And I thank God for, and I thank God for uh, giving Dr. Robertson to us. And also he talked about his son. He shared with him his passion to do research in early childhood education on reading. The technique that he used to teach his son reading because his son could read by the age of two and a half to three years. And he said, we will do this research in our early childhood and we can show it to Jamaica how children can be benefited through early reading and how they can be intelligent because he believed his son was very intelligent and smart. So son, um, uh, Mr. Martin, your father was very proud of you. Um, so here we have a wonderful person. We miss him t uh, very much uh, for the last few uh, months here in Jamaica, but we thank God for giving him to us. We thank his family for sharing him to us. And now we commit our lives to keep up his legacy, going through our words and actions so that we can touch people around the Jesus way and follow uh, in his footsteps so that we can meet him when he comes the second time. God bless us.
So many fond memories of Professor Kestner Robertson. I just want to mention that the last time he had communion with us, even though he is a man of few words, he met me towards the door of my office and he said, Pastor, and as I looked around, he said, wonderful communion, it has blessed my soul. We thank the Lord for a life that was well lived. We continue with the program and we will have a special musical tribute coming from David Popusky, replacing Raphael Salazar. Uh, Raphael Salazar should give us a clarinet solo, but we will have a violin solo from David. After this solo, we will have tributes in the following order. The first will be done by Dr. Earl Cameron, colleague and friend, followed by Pastor Errol Thomas, colleague and friend, and then Mr. Cleveland Allen, friend.
tribute to the late Dr. Kessner Robertson. And my wife and I thought it necessary to do this tribute together. We pause to express our condolences to members of the Robinson family, and in, partic and in particular to Josephine, his wife, his son Martin and wife, Our hearts are saddened at the passing of Dr. Kessner Robertson, a husband, father, brother, a friend. Jamaica, Northern Caribbean University, and the Seventh-day Adventist Church have lost an outstanding musician. We certainly will miss his touch on musical instruments, notably the organ, which he played with such grace and beauty. Professor Robertson was special to us. My husband was a member of the Fine Arts Chorale, which was formed by Dr. Robertson in the 1960s. He played for our wedding many years ago. And when we lived in Canada, he came to minister to us in music at our church and was the first person to have played a new electronic pipe organ that was installed in the Mississauga Seventh-day Adventist Church. Unlike other musicians, Dr. Robertson was not driven by money, but by dedication and service to God and people. The brevity of his sickness and the swiftness of his death leave an emptiness in the hearts of many who loved him. Once again, death reminds us that we are not here to stay. As Shakespeare once said, we are all actors on the stage of life. We enter, play our part, and then make our exit. I believe that Kestner performed very well on the big stage of life. Rest in peace, my brother, until that great getting up morning. Dr. Kessner Robertson, I view him as a fine product from humble beginnings to world-renowned organist and pianist with vast experiences as a performer and music director and teacher but he's now asleep awaiting the call of the great life giver to rise to eternal life. Oh, what a blessed hope. I remember that when I was assigned to internship at the Kencott Church, that's where I made contact with Kessner. And I want you to know that the time that was spent at Kencott was a time well spent. Kessner knew how to enjoy himself, especially if he felt comfortable in your presence, or you were accepted in his circle of friends, or you share similar interests in the fine arts, classical organ, church music, or simply playing dominoes? If a discussion was up his street, 
he would be involved in in straightening up those who didn't have it too straight. Back then in the youthful years at Kencott Church, I can remember his love for fast sporting cars. I see, I see somebody shaking their heads. And especially when he proudly owned a Lotus Ford Cortina. Kessner was an ardent and sincere Seventh-day Adventist who strived to live in accordance with his beliefs. He loved the Lord and served his church locally and overseas, as well as a music minister and professor. Kessner was a well-structured, organized, and by nature a reserved person. He could also be described as a perfectionist, and I'm sure his choir people and students alike would agree with me. He did not settle for mediocrity. So he pushed everyone to do their best, as he had no intention to be a showcase of embarrassment. <laughs> Memories again go back to Kencott, to the many experiences that were had there. He founded a group known as the Fine Art Koran in preparing them to present the Easter cantata of the seven last words of Jesus. Hearing them rehearse over and over made those of us who could only listen, notice what I said, could only listen, from the outside know the anthems and parts so well that he could mimic, that we could mimic or complete with the professionals. Today, Josephine, Martin, and Clarissa, and the rest of his family, colleagues and friends, as we remember Kessner as a fine husband, as a father, a relative or friend, one who served well the countries in which he lived and worked, the churches and institutions where he, sh where he shared his talents, let us mindfully focus on the thought and take comfort in the soon return of our Lord Jesus Christ. And you know, I remember there was one, one, one weekend, one year, I don't, I don't remember when it was, but I don't know how many of you remember that the group of four of us decided to go to Blue Mountain Peak. Now it was Tony Brown and Errol Thomas and two other people. Well, and it was something when we walked up there, he was not the last person to get up there. And for those of you who know the Blue Mountain Peak, there's a kind of triangular thing at the top. And one of the things that he did was that when we got up there, he was one of the first person to climb up there. Well, the rest of us got up there, but after he got up there. Yes, he has been a source of encouragement to many people. And I believe that we need to take comfort in the soon return of our Lord and Savior. As the song says, the golden morning is fast approaching. Jesus soon will come to take his faithful and happy children to their promised home. There are those loved ones who have long been parted. We'll all meet that day. The tears of those who are brokenhearted will be wiped away. And then it says, Oh, we see the gleams of the golden morning. Let us then be true and faithful, trusting, serving every day. Just one glimpse of him in glory, the Lord will the toils of life repay. What a blessed morning that will be when our Savior we will see 
and together with our resurrected loved ones be reunited to live with Jesus evermore until then, my friends and family members of Kessner, let us be faithful. Can we say amen? amen. Members of the Platform Party, members of the Ruby family, ladies and gentlemen, it is somewhat of a disservice to Kesno, my friend, when I am given three minutes recall nearly 65 years of friendship. But if I can bar borrow a few words from Rudyard Kipling, a few words. If you can keep your head while others about you are losing theirs and blaming it on you, if you can dream and do not make dreams your master. If you can talk with the crowds and keep your virtue or walk with kings and do not lose the common touch and the last line of that poem, then you are a man, my friend. Kessner, as you have heard already, was a man of few words when he's ready. <laughs> but he was one who could hold his own in any conversation, and he does not give up very often. Kessner was one who was very kind, generous, and you have heard all this already, and that is one of the disadvantages of being the last person to pay tribute, because I could just say ditto, ditto, and goodbye. But I could remember when one friend and colleague, when her mother was sick and ultimately she died, Kessner would take his time to drive to the market to get the best vegetables, the best fruits you could find to take to her, and not on one occasion, but on several occasions. Kessler Kessno, the words of another song, has come back to me. If I could help, can help somebody as I pass along. If I could cheer somebody with a word or a song. If I could show somebody he's traveling wrong, then my living shall not be in vain. There are several men and women who today Kessner helped and showed the way. In particular, and I hope, well, they are not here, so I have nobody to ask permission. I can remember 
Peter and Paul Tucker. Presently, you know them as Dr. Peter Tucker and Dr. Paul Tucker. When Peter and Paul's mother migrated and she decided to take her six children, she worked and then she sent for them. Peter and Paul left to go to the United States. They didn't like it. And within six months, the two boys were back out here. And they are twins, by the way. <laughs> and uh, they turned up at Kessner's door, virtually, at the School of Music. And Kessner virtually took them under his wings. When they were finished there, at the Jamaica School of Music, by then, Kessner was at AUC. Kessner took them there and shepherded them. And two Sundays ago, when they had that memorial service at Atlantic Union College, Peter conducted the orchestra. Paul Tucker directed the chorale who sang. And then you had Dr. Paul Shaw, international pianist, played a piano solo. And another doctor, now from Nigeria, he played a piano solo. And the list goes on and on. I am going to take a liberty to do something. Somebody some years ago wrote a poem. I took it to heart and learned the poem. The rose is exquisitely beautiful and her fragrance has scented the air. Yet nature forbids being beautiful and by silence has spawned despair. Each time mine eyes behold the rose, excited fancies seek expression. But soon, my spirit slumps morose, the victim of undue repression. O oh, beautiful rose, if only I could, I would break this bond of silence and herald thy praise both near and far till vibrant echoes transcend reticence and orbit the most distant stars. Time marches on. Ere day is done, my shattered courage will be mended and repression's scars shall be avenged. Some years after that poem was written, Kessner Mary, the subject of that poem. <laughs> and the rest is history. I remember finally, in 1972, Kessner and I went to Miami. And after we were finished doing what we went there to do, we went back to a room in the hotel and he saw me writing and he said, what's that you're writing? I said, I'm trying to put together the theme song for the Youth Congress. He said, may I see it? I give it to him. He looked it over, and then he said, are you sure this is exactly what you want the words to be? He said, maybe. He said, well, why not edit it? Give me back. And I did. 
And he took it, and in about 15 minutes, 20 minutes, he handed me back a paper and said, that's your song. I said, but I cannot read music. <laughs> and he said, okay, I'll sing it for you, and he did. He said, this is your theme song for the Youth Congress. When we came back to Jamaica and we sent it up to the conference office in Kingston, immediately they decided that this would be the theme song for the Youth Congress 1972. But they said to Kessner, look, we need you to write the full scroll for this because Dr. Rittenhouse, Rittenhouse and her orchestra will be coming to play at the Youth Congress. So Kessner took it and he wrote the full score for the various parts, instruments. And on that night, when it was sung for the first time, I remembered Pastor Walters saying, Brother Robertson, Brother Allen, please stand. And we stood up. He said, God bless you. This is an inspiration. And the words of the song, Christian youth with love in your heart, we shall march through the conflict with Christ. We shall foil the plans of the enemy by our teaching and preaching his word. With the sword of the spirit and the shield of faith, we shall fight, we shall conquer and defeat our foe. So come now and rally and join the ranks, and let us march through the conflict with Christ. I am saying to you now that my friend, Kestner Robertson, is sleeping. An icon has fallen. A prince is asleep, but he won't be sleeping for too long. Because I personally believe that in the not too distant future, we all shall see the king when he comes. Thank you. Some men have died and have left behind tombstones. Others have left monument, monuments. We thank you so much for the tribute, and we will go into another tribute in the form of music coming from Mr. Erland Cornwall, followed by acknowledgments that will come from Dr. Josephine Robertson widow.
there are times when thank you, no matter how sincere, just doesn't seem enough. This is such an occasion. Mummy, Clarissa, and I wish to extend out sincere, heartfelt gratitude to each and every one of you for the lavish way in which you have covered us in your love. Kessner, in his last days of illness, requested that I remember to thank everyone who through personal phone calls, cards, emails, and digital messaging gave him encouragement through their expressions of gratitude and caring. Your outreach to him was a wonderful boost as he went through the short but difficult illness. Your calls and cards, even when he was unable to say much, were precious to him. Mom, Martin, and I wish to add to that our thanks to those who reached out to us in unbelievable ways of kindness. We are awed and humbled by your presence here today and gratefully accept your expressions of caring. Kessner believed firmly in the power of music to bring out in people the best of themselves. He also believed that those who chose music as their profession should use it to the glory of God. He spent his professional life seeking to do so and to awaken in others this understanding of gift and responsibility. He never failed to express his gratitude to the late Mrs. Rita Kaur for recognizing and fanning to life in him his pursuit of excellence in music. He sought to pass on to others through mentoring this gift she bestowed on him. This was aptly displayed on November 4th when his students and mentees gathered at the Atlantic Union College Church for a memorial service to express their gratitude through music. Such individuals included Dr. Peter Tucker, Dr. Paul Tucker, Dr. Carleen Waugh, Dr. O'Neill Mundell, and others who had reached back specifically into this NCU community to share their nascent sorry, to share with nascent musicians their skill. Kessner's vision was that the students from this community would in turn link hands as they too reach back to pull others into a love for and the pursuit of musical excellence. Even as Mrs. Core reached out for Kessner, and he for Carleen War and the Wars of Jamaica, and she for Sheikah Brown and the Browns of NCU and all the world, may the chain of musical excellence continue unbroken to the until the return of our Lord, who will then say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Based on his dream and request, we have started the Kessner Robertson Music Scholarship, which will be used to identify and support students of NCU who would choose to take on the hard work of becoming socially aware musicians in pursuit of excellence to the glory of God. In pursuit of that dream, it is my privilege and honor to present to NCU the initial sum of $4,000, US dollars that is, <laughs> towards, towards the Kessner Robertson Music Scholarship. Other contributions may be sent to NCU with the note for the Kessner Robertson Music Scholarship. Thank you, everyone. All protocols observed. Good morning. It's my role to ask for the offering. And the offering will go 
towards the scholarship just announced. But I want you to understand that you need to plan your giving. Dr. Kessner Robertson was a visionary. It didn't just start and end with accreditation for the music department. There's a strategic plan. You can come and see the handbook that he developed and the end goal is a performing arts center here in Jamaica and everything that goes with it. Dr. Robertson was an outstanding mentor. I soon realized there was no point me telling him to call me Diana. It was always Dr. Sinclair and then Dr. Wilson. He even called the office workers Mr. and Miss. He was a stickler for protocol, for the English language, and attention to detail. So you know that the plans he's put in place are well detailed. He had an encyclopedic knowledge, not just about music, but about everything. Although he had a stern manner, and some of you may know him from his committee meetings where there was just no compromise, it was as a result of his great faith. Since his death, I've realized that there are several things that I didn't know about him, despite working with him so closely and living in the same building. When did he find time to do anything extra? I realized what a soft heart he had for people. When I complained about the choir or about the music students, um, their late attendance, their lack of homework, he would say to me, they haven't had the same privileges as you. He was very decisive at audition. And sometimes I'd be surprised. What could he see in those students that I didn't see? How could he be so kind, so understanding? How could he give up himself so freely? No matter how busy he was, he would always stop to talk to the music students. It made me look more closely at the students and their potential. I'm sure that many of you do not know the countless hours that Dr. Robertson spent in preparing to accompany students working with them, not only supporting their performance, but coaching and expanding their knowledge of performance practice. He had a saying, it isn't practice if someone's listening to you. Thus, his time at the piano and the organ was spent in the wee hours of the morning or late at night, which was also the time to make recordings that were just heard by us in performance. I wish we had more time to spend with him, but the memories are strong. The way forward is clear. His legacy must continue. So as I ask the, um, those taking the offering to please stand and come to the front, I would urge you to take his example in your life work so that when time is over, you will be able to look back, as I'm sure that he did, and say, I've done the very best that I could possibly do. No one could ask for more. So the Memorial Fund will go to support students interested in studying music here at NCU. I don't know how much it takes to put a student through one year at NCU, but there are many students that have the potential to do exceptionally well. We have some examples amongst us today, but we hope that you will help us to find and to provide for more. So please stand as we pray to bless your giving for this Memorial Scholarship Fund. Dear Father, when we reflect on Dr. Robertson's life, a life well lived, we think about our own lives and the things that we are doing, the things that you have placed before us, Lord. Help us to show a great commitment to the duty that you have blessed us with. So we ask you, Lord, to bless what is given today. Bless us as we give of ourselves and of our means to help others. Bless this offering particularly towards the Kessner Robertson 
Memorial Music Scholarship Fund and all the students that will benefit from it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. If I'll ask the offering to be taken from the front, Mr. Popescu and I will give you another selection while you plan your giving. Thank you. The second reading comes from 1 Thessalonians 4, reading from verses 13 to 18. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. 
Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Our Executive Secretary, Jamaica Union Conference of Seventh-day Adventists, has been chosen to bring to us the homily in the person of Dr. Merrick Walker. After the singing of this very special meditation song by the NCU Choral, the next voice you will hear is it that of God's servant, Dr. Merrick Walker. consolation and use me as your instrument I pray in Jesus name members of the bereaved family sister Josephine Martin and Clarissa Chairman of the Board of Governors, 
Pastor Everett Brown, President of Northern Caribbean University, Dr. Lincoln Edwards. Today, ladies and gentlemen, mourners all, today my heart is limping as I give the final salute to my friend, a man of valor, a man who made his strides and contributed positively to the therapy of countless individuals through music. Today, Northern Caribbean University, along with its expanding community and stakeholders, join in mourning the family of the late Dr. Kessner Robertson. Not only to mourn his passing, but to celebrate or memorialize his living. And I am so glad for the scholarship. And I endorse by the power of the pulpit that we support so that other lives will be touched. Fellow mourners, sometimes there are mountains, sometimes there are valleys. Sometimes there is music and sometimes there is noise. Smooth paths, rough roads. Sometimes smiles, sometimes tears. But today, I say to you that our grief is not beyond its grasp, and our valley not beneath its reach. Our burden not above is strength. And believe it, our loss today, not bigger than our gain in God's tomorrow. I prayed for you, not two prayers, but just one that the Lord will take you as my subject suggest from limping to leaping. Consider with me Psalm 42, verse 8, where it says that in the daytime the Lord commands his loving kindness, and in the night his song shall be with me. It is night, and we are singing about the morning. Careful analysis of the Bible reveals that the Bible is more than history, as we see in the Pentateuch, more than prophecy, as in the prophets, more than poetry as we see in the writings, more than letters as in the epistles and gospels, more than apocalypse as in revelation. But therein is contained a particular genre of emotional state called lament. And a lament 
is really a cathartic moment of expression of loss or void. And so we have come to a cathartic moment. And yes, it is all right. It is all right to lament. And today I am lamenting. My heart is broken. My spirit is sad to know that such a musicologist is no more among us. The Bible is clear. Ezekiel sighed. Oh yes, Jeremiah cried. David wailed and Jesus wept. Sigh on, cry on, wail on, weep on. Bible characters, when they were broken with, with grief, they clothed themselves in sackcloth and ash. Oh yes, it is all right to mourn. And I found in my preparation for this discourse an unpublished manuscript of a, a lament. It goes like this. Grief at its best is grief at its worst. The only cure for grief is grief itself. Let me cry, don't dry my eyes. Let me stumble, don't hold my hands. Give me darkness, I need no light. Leave my pain, let me feel the strain. I am broken, don't fix me. I am bent, don't strengthen me. I am weak, don't, don't strengthen me. I am weak, don't strengthen me. Let me mourn less. I die. End of quote. Sort of hollow, but mourning as we look at the process of grief is a therapy to the soul. And today my desire is that we will experience therapy that we have a song in the night, but joy is coming in the morning. It is sort of hollow, we say, in reference to this manuscript. But you know, I have found out that in the laments of the Bible, when the characters were grief stricken and uh, when the prophets wrote from this brokenness the language itself is broken in what we call the Hebrew poetic quina meter whereby when you put the two appropriate lines together one line has more words or grammatic units than the second line. So it's like a man walking with a, a broken leg. So it's one, two, three, four for the first line and one, two, three. So there is a gap. And so the Lord allowed the Bible in laments to be written with brokenness and lingering and limping the Lord himself enters into the passage and our hearts and understand that we are limping today I am limping oh let me limp let me limp to limp is to be cast down let me be cast down to limp is to be disoriented, 
let me be to be disappointed. Let me be shock and denial and anger. I am limping. Limping is numbness. Limping is emptiness. Limping is helplessness. Limping is brokenness. And yes, we are broken by death. But I have a song in the night, the darkest time. I have a song and I hear the music saying that the morning is coming. Let me limp. I can't sing with Jimmy Cliff. I can make it now the pain is gone. All of the bad feelings have disappeared. I can't sing that. Here is that rainbow I've been praying for. I can't sing that. It's going to be a bright and sunshiny day. I can't sing that. Oh no. But praise God, I have a song in the night that the morning is coming. Let me limp. Let me limp. Today is not a bright and sunshiny day. The rain is not gone. One of the brightest minds is missing. And research shows that musicians have healthier minds than the rest of us. Did you know that? One of the healthiest minds is missing. A musicologist is mumped. A professor is not had done his last lecture. A philosopher made his last point. A philanthropist gave his last gift. A Christian lived his last value. It's not a bright and sunshiny day. An analyst completed his last summary. A counselor conveyed his last wisdom. A composer wrote his last piece. A musician played his last song. Let me limp. It's not a bright and sunshiny day. The rain is not gone. But I have a song in the night about the morning. I hear no music. Do you hear it? Alas, harmony is hijacked and melody is missing and rhythm is reticent. The structure, music, shattered. I hear no music. Do you? Meter is motionless and texture is taken. Voice is hushed and instrument silent. I hear no music. Let me limp. But I am limping only in prostration on my knees. Looking up from whence cometh my help. I'm limping in the blessedness of those who mourn because my Bible says those who mourn, praise God, will be comforted and the family must be comforted that there is a bright tomorrow coming. And I ask the question, how long will we be limping? How long will we see the dark cloud and not the silver lining? How long? How long before the morning light? How long before everything is, is going to be all right? How long before I lay down my burden down by the riverside? How long before I take up my golden harp, although I can't play on this side? How long before I learn to play on the other side? How long? Will I be in the valley before climbing up the mountain? The Bible says in Hebrews 10 verse 37, And yet a little while, and he that shall come will come and not tarry. And the New Testament Scholars will tell you that yet a little while 
is used to render an emphasis and in its literal translation it is a, a little a little how little how little a little while in the eyes of God is but a short time so it says yet a little while in a little little while he will come and he will not tarry and our gain will be greater tomorrow will be greater than our loss today I can hear the chariots rumble I can see the marching throng the flurry of God's trumpet spells the end of sin and wrong how long you ask I heard someone say because Jesus entered into the hollowness of my sorrow because he immersed himself with the feelings of my infirmity because weeping remains only for a night and rejoicing is certain in the morning because death could not conquer him and the grave could not confine him because death could not conquer him and the grave could not confine him he is higher than the highest mightier than the mightiest he is the lord my shepherd circumstances cannot restrict him oh no and the devil cannot bind him or retain him and because they that wait upon the lord shall renew their strength they shall mount up with wings like eagles they shall run and not be weary they shall walk and not faint how long i say because he is the conquering lion of the tribe of judah i say not long i have a song in the night about the morning and the music of professor will play again and the choir members will sing again and because he can turn valleys into mountains because he can turn rough roads into smooth paths because he can turn tears into smiles and night into day and whereas he can take the heat out of the fiery furnace and the roar out of the lion's den and the venom out of the sting of death Oh, and he puts vision into blindness, sound into deafness, speech into dumbness, health into sickness, lips into lameness. Praise God, hallelujah. And uh, hope into despair and life into death because he is who he is. I say to you, I am not limping anymore. I am coming up. I am rising up. I am getting up. I am straightening up. I am praying up, I am cheering up, I am standing up by the grace of God because if he is with me, his running staff will comfort me and the music will play again. I am stepping up, I am jumping up and praise God, I am leaping up because one of these mornings, death will be conquered. So in the night, his song will be with me. And oh... Says David in Psalm 96, sing unto the Lord a new song. Let the music play. Let the music play that the Lord is my refuge. Let the music play that the Lord is my rock. Let the music play that he will never leave you or forsake you let the music play and I pray God that as you go through the process of mourning you will allow the Lord to strengthen and keep you 
Dr. Neville Gallimore gave my brother two birds, the homers, and he said, anywhere you go and you let go of these birds, they will find their way home. My brother went to Old Harbor from Lock Patrick and let go those birds. Oh yes, he must have been a very brave man, risking losing these birds. And so he let go the birds. And sure enough, the birds found their way back to Nopatrick. Our friend, your husband, your father, your father-in-law, he had invested his life in the certainty of the blessed hope. And I tell you that because he lived for Jesus, the song will play and the music will not be hushed and the meter will be in place and the structure will not be shattered. But on the resurrection morning when the dead in Christ shall rise and the trumpet shall sound, Castor will get up to the music of the new creation. Don't be disappointed. Let God move you from limping to leaping. And remember the song, let the music play. God bless. While the immediate family will remain seated, I invite the rest of the congregation to rise as we pray this prayer. Oh God, our Father, Comforter of Israel, sent of the Father and the Son to bless us. We pause this morning to pray this prayer of comfort for wife, son, and daughter-in-law. Beyond them we pray for other members of the family. Pray for the grieving community of Northern Caribbean University. For the lives whom your servant, Professor, Dr. Kessner Robertson has touched the choirs, the chorales, the orchestras, the soloists, I pray now that your comfort will rest upon all of us. May we with the eyes of the Apostle Paul see the day when the first trumpet shall sound from the eastern skies. And you will call the sleeping saints who have been resting in their graves.
we believe that Professor Robinson will rise from his sleeping position, move to a standing position, and as he raises his hands towards heaven to meet the Lord in the air and continue to take a flight towards the kingdom of our God. That you will comfort us with these words as we look to that great day of your coming. Comfort us now, we pray. Remove the hurt, the pain, the loss, and transform it in the mo moments of hope and reflection on the day of your coming. When this mortal subject to decay and death shall become immortal, when this body subject to corruption shall become incorruptible, together we will joy, eternal bliss with you. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, we commend you for coming and for your conduct. We are about to sing the closing hymn. Please observe the instruction that will be given. We are going to recess the platform party at the singing of the song, at the end of the first stanza, and we are embracing the refrain, when all my labors and trials are o'er. The platform party will lead the way down the aisles. We will go towards the side door to the right. We will ask the immediate family members to join us Sister Josephine, Brother Martin, and Lady Carissa. Followed by the choir, then we will have the other family members, friends, and well-wishers. So just to remind you, we are going to stand for the closing hymn, When All of My Labors and Trials Are O'er. The platform party will lead the way down the aisles, down towards the side door. The immediate family members will join us where you will be privileged to greet, to meet, and even to make sweet. Then we will have the choir come in behind. The other relatives follow the choir, then friends and well-wishers. Would you join me at this time as we stand for this closing hymn? The family members are also reminded that there is a little repass and also for friends. So um, further instructions will be given as it relates to where it is located that is at Ierson Chin Nursing School. Shall we join in singing?